What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're checking out a title called Rogue Station. This is a game that mixes together something like Starship Theory with FTL. That's kind of what it reminds me of. This is a game where you build a custom space station. You've got a bunch of crew that are manning that station and it's got FTL style combat and it's got a bit of a timeline that's kind of like a better telegraphed rim world. Uh, that allows you to know when things are going to happen and so your station is floating through the void and you've got one year until bounty hunters come and find you because you are a dirty deserter there's kind of a civil war going on in the galaxy right now and you don't want to fight in it you just want to hang out you want to be a space miner and you want to drink space pepsi and the space military is not down with that overall mo this game is a roguelite so this game has metagame progression the further you get into the game, the more currency you earn. You unlock trinkets for your new starting station uh, that allow you to get various bonuses that make the game easier. Spoiler alert, you're going to want those because this game is ridiculously hard. Like, this is a very difficult game that is actively trying to murder you at any given moment. And sometimes the enemy ship that gets procedurally generated that you've got to fight against... It's just the counter to your ship, and there's nothing you can really do about it, and it just kind of stomps your face in. And so we're going to dive on in for about 30 minutes today and see how far into the game we can get. We'll play on the normal difficulty so that you get a rough idea of how the game plays. Uh, if after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, i got a link for you down below in the description. And then on top of that, you can also hang out with me at my Twitch and my Discord link down there just in case you wanted to hang out live any day of the week. Let's go ahead and run it on back. All right, so we have station managers here. The station manager is effectively your player character. If they die, the game is over from what I've seen. So the station manager, we've got Jenna Willikers and we've got Yuno, Yuto Jong as of right now. These guys will have different skill sets and they will have different ships and different layouts that you start with. I do not like the layout of her ship at all, like in the slightest, and so I, I really don't see a lot of reasons to play her right now. Uh, Yuto Jong, a little bit better. He starts out with a lot more crew like four crew instead of three crew and I like the layout of his ship a lot better the downside here is Jenna Willikers is a pilot which means at the beginning of the game you get a little bit better evade for dodging enemy fire whereas with him he's a gunner so it's going to make you hit a little bit harder and a little bit more accurately you get more crew here but I find that Yuto kind of has trouble with offensive capabilities because the machine gun does not kill things as fast as the laser does in my experience We'll start off with the default play. That's going to give us a crew over here. We have Daphne Stewart, we have Presley Higgins, and we have Tylan Castillo. We'll have to hire some more crew, but I think this will work out. The biggest issue here is going to be our floor plan that we play around with with this ship. Because oddly enough, the game does not have walls. You can't build walls in this game, which seems like a fairly massive oversight to me. All you can build is floor tiles. There's no segmenting walls out, but I hope they add that about as soon as possible because not being able to build walls really limits sort of creatively what you can do with your ships aesthetically. I find that all my ships are lopsided and ugly and it bothers me. And if I could build walls, they would not be lopsided and ugly. They would be beautiful. So welcome to our ship. Uh, it is a ship and it flies through space. We've got a mining apparatus over here. What will happen is they will man this whenever they have downtime and they will pick up these little floating space, I don't know, goobers, MacGuffins. I don't know what they are, but they bring them back and they're worth money. And there's like a little mining animation and there's little mining bots that go out and do that. These right here are power generators. They generate our power. They do exactly what it says on the tin. This is our laser gun. It's our most favorite laser gun. I named it Ted. Uh, we're going to need a few other stations in order to make this whole thing work. And we've got 5,000 bucks to play around with. First and foremost, I definitely think we need to hire another gunner. Without another gunner, we're going to have a really bad time. So there's another gunner. We've got to kind of pray that the enemy doesn't have shields. But in starting out with energy weapons, we actually have a better fighting chance. Ballistic weapons are really easily neutralized by this object that's called a force field. It can stop like three turrets worth of bullets by itself and... If you come across an enemy that has a force field and you have all projectile weapons, you just kind of have to accept that you're going to die. The good news is shields are not nearly as good at blocking lasers as the lasers are at breaking shields. And so I've found that the lasers tend to be really good for eliminating enemies. But the first thing we probably want to build is another laser blaster station. We could put that right there. And then we'll put another blaster gun on that side. We're probably going to use this area 
as our... My suggestion would be that we use this area as kind of like our, our piloting dome. Like, this is the area where all of our piloting stuff will be at. And so we'll take our systems over here and we'll put an engine down in this area. Because the engine should give us a small amount of evasion. Yeah. And then we've also got the piloting station over here. So I'll play around with both of those. And hopefully we've got enough crew to really make that actively happen. I don't know why these guys aren't doing anything. That pop-up right there was a bounty hunter. Effectively telling us that she's aware of the fact that we've, diver we've deserted from the space military. And that we don't want to be a part of the Civil War. And she is coming for us. And we have one year to get ready before all of her I I don't know why she cares I would guess that she cares because that's how she makes her living is by capturing poor folks like us and forcing us to come back and fight in the space war but I don't know there's our little mining robots right there you can see they're bringing back their load and this right here is one of my favorite parts about this game when they dock they put these little canisters in and they make just the most satisfying little coin clinky noise huh. and then we get paid like 300 omni cash down here is a timeline. I think this is a very good innovation. So in this game, you don't really have the problem you have in RimWorld where Cassandra and Randy are actively being like, meow, 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 like carpet bombing you with events when you're not ready for it. In this game, you've got a timeline and everything that's going to happen to you is on this timeline. And once you've played through once or twice, uh, you can mouse over these and you will know that like this is a ship that's going to attack us. This right here is a shop where we get to buy some things. It actually lends a little bit of predictability to the game, despite the fact that this is proceduralized, like you never know what's going to happen in what order. I think the last time I played the game, I was up against like I had a mercenary trader first and then I had some other things going on. It does allow you to figure out what's actively going to happen to your ship at any given moment. And I think that's a good thing. We're still not fully crewed right now. How is our oxygen looking like? How do I know how much oxygen everybody is breathing right now? Adele Schmitz. Well, Schmitz, welcome on board. We built this Schmitty. We built this Schmitty on Tootsie Roll. New Girl is one of my favorite shows in the entire world. There we go. Now we've got a third gunner. Hopefully we have enough oxygen. We've got plus 80 oxygen right now. Hopefully it'll be okay. I assume, like, so oxygen seems to travel in between compartments independent of whether or not... So in combat, it looks like... Okay, so we're going to need a new power grid pretty soon. But in combat, all of our manned stations are giving us a little bit of power. We're probably going to want to expand these areas out. Well, I don't know if I want to do that. That might be a little bit cavalier. Oh, it looks like that's that's a little bit of gore right there. Ooh, look at that right there. Look at that right there. It's clipping into itself. Don't like that. Nope, nope, nope. But it's okay. We don't really have much of a choice right now because I need more power. Cost me a thousand Omni Cash to add another power grid. Part of me feels like, can you rotate this stuff? So listen, I don't know if you can rotate stuff. I've tried all the normal contenders, like the brackets, Q, E, R, you know, tab, to see if I can rotate. If rotation is not in this game, it needs to be in this game. Uh, rotation is a really good idea, in my opinion. Let's put this down to here. And I guess we can just kind of make it symmetrical. Eh, we'll just make it symmetrical. It's fine. And I don't want all of my systems inside one area, so I'm going to put a power grid down here too. And that should hold us for a little bit. We're no longer hurting on power. Our first enemy is about to pull up on us, and what you will see is that the game mirrors FTL. We can click on this to look at the enemy. We can click that button right there to look back at our ship. I have had trouble. So the weird thing is, like in FTL, what happens is uh, it zooms in on your ship and like your ship takes up half the screen and their ship takes up half the screen. In this game, you can fight against multiple enemy craft simultaneously. So that system is not going to work. The downside and the consequence here is that combat can be fairly chaotic. 
when it comes to like fighting multiple ships at once. When you're fighting ships like this, you can kind of actively see what's going on. But once the game gets a little bit more cluttered, it can be really difficult to track everything that's happening. All three of you fire on his weapon station, please. I want his weapon station to no longer work. He is going to do his damnedest to try to fix that. And we're going to say, no, you're not going to fix that. I would like to see the weapons kind of like... They do fade out a little bit, but I feel like each of these projectiles should have kind of like a little bit of like a wow, like Doppler effect as it flies by. I know we're in the vacuum of space right now, so technically there should be no sound once the projectile is in the vacuum. But it's just one of those things that I think would make the game feel a little bit better. Now, the enemy's total hull is listed right there. We have killed off that crewman, and we have lit a couple of fires. Let's go ahead and scare this guy right here. This game is bloody and gory, and in fact, it's got some pretty nasty animations if you zoom in and watch while you're fighting enemies. Uh, what can happen every now and again is, like, if a compartment depressurizes and you watch, like, the little pixel guy, he'll get, like, panicky, and then his eyes will explode and disintegrate out of his head, and then the empty smoking eye sockets, he'll fall over with blood all over the floor. Like, the game is fairly violent if you look at the little sprites so we can get more laser damage dealt uh, so this is where the game actually overlaps a little bit with vampire survivors every single time you kill an enemy you get a perk that remains for the rest of your run if we take the laser blaster right here we'll fire our guns faster and they'll deal more damage i think that's a pretty good pick but you can also get new building types inside of there that will make your ship stronger and make your ship have a few more options when it comes to surviving can i get more like mining thingies I can get more mining thingies but they cost 5,000 bucks and I don't know if you've noticed but we don't have 5,000 of the dollar dues right now we're a little bit poor a merchant from a trading company has arrived it looks like this merchant is mostly focused on crew I don't have any money so it's not really gonna work out and I'm not a big fan of space brigandry so I'm not gonna try to rob them either because that seems like something the bad guy would do and I'm one of those people that can never do the bad guy option in a video game because I feel bad. Let's go ahead and fight this guy. We'll start firing some lasers. Yep, fire them. Oh, he's got the he got the projectile bullets, huh? Okay. Well, here's the thing. Shoot lasers until that guy doesn't have a gun anymore. Perfect. His weapons have been disabled. He's trying to fire a shot at us. But I can virtually well assure promise you that he's not going to get that shot off. Get lasered. Bleah! He's been cut in half by a laser. Different guns have different fatalities when they hit enemies, by the way. Yeah, and it's kind of like fire at crew. If you can hit somebody, hit somebody. It looks like the station's on fire right now, so that works out perfectly fine, too. Technically, I could probably swap one gun over and try to take out their oxygen. There we go. Just suffocate him a little bit. Ones and twos, fire over there. What am I even bothering with that for? Just destroy the power grid. Then they can't do anything. Oh, never mind. Everybody on the ship died. I think they like sac I think sometimes they give up when they know they can't win. It really wants me to take that medic station, and I really don't want that medic station. But we're not going to get any other buildings until I take the medic station. Well, the reroll gave us a the reroll gave us a machine gun. I'll probably take the mining rig upgrade though. It feels like we're mining really slowly, and I'd like to focus on economy for a minute. Make sure that we got lots and lots of space ducats, just sort of flowing in at a satisfying rate. Ten percent increase in the amount of money that we make. Feels like it'll work out for me long term. Very nice. Uh, so every now and again, you're going to find a space colony. This game assumes that you're selling your goods to these space colonies. And so what you can do is when you arrive at Space Colonies, they're going to ask you for a request. That request can be money, it can be materials, it can be a crewman. And if you give it to them, it will level this place up and each node of ore that you sell off will now be more valuable, which increases your income. And then on top of that, they're the ones that are sending you crew. And so you'll get higher level crewmen as well that have higher caps on their skills. For right now, it looks like we do not have anybody that can provide help to this colony, so we've just got to ignore it. 
That's a bummer, but that's the way the dice roll. Every time you play the game, the asteroid that your ship is attached to, it's a different color, which I think is actually kind of a cool thematic thing. I've had like pink, I've had green, I've had gray. Makes each run feel a little tiny bit different from the previous runs. We've got a boss fight coming up that I'm actively terrified of here. I don't think it's going to work out for me. They've got two gunnery stations and they are firing lasers. Let's go ahead and see. Let's spread some damage around to their power grid. I don't know what they're firing at on us right now. It looks like they're trying to do the same thing to me. They're trying to knock out my power grid. All right. Uh, I need you to... Why are you not piloting right now? Piloting is the only important thing that you should be doing at the moment. That's like your, your one job is to pilot. But apparently they're dead. We can get a force field generator. That's very helpful. The force field generator is one of those objects I was talking about that more or less nullifies an entire type of gun, which can be helpful. However, we can also make ourselves mine faster and make more money. I don't think money is that helpful if you're dead. So I'm going to take the force field generator. It looks like we've also got some fires and things we need to deal with in here. That or the ship is too damaged to function properly. I think we've got like a fire and then we've got some other things happening. Looks like they're trying to fix the mining robots too. They destroyed our mining robots. I maybe should have stalled out that fight a little bit longer. It feels to me like we've got a lot of repairs that we need to take care of. Like we're trying, but... Uh, this right here at the Mercenary Agency, it comes up every now and again, and they're asking you for one of your crewmen to go out and do a mission, and if they do that mission, you get a bunch of money. The downside is they're going to be gone for 11 days, and we've got a fight coming up in like five days, so it may get a little bit ugly, and their success rate kind of depends on what level their combat is. I think it's a bad idea for right now, I don't think it's a, a plan that smacks of wisdom to allow my crew to kind of like be on away missions when things are about to go down. Uh, everybody on your stations for when the enemy arrives, please. I would like to be able to open up basically with a, you know, with the, with the pre-fire here. Like we need the weapon pre-igniter. Yeah, you guys, no, do not mind. Stay on your stations, please. This is not a request. This is captain's orders. And you see, when you listen to the captain, good things happen. Uh, we've got systems over here. I can't, oh, I forgot to... I needed to put in... No, dude, we're going to die. I needed to install the thing that mitigates enemy bullets, and I did not do it. So they've got a machine gun turret. I think we should probably go for the throat over here as aggressively as possible. And we'll just deal with whatever happens on board our ship as it comes up, I think. Luckily, lasers. All right, he's already dead. Let's stop his gunfire about as soon as possible. Have we taken any hits yet? Uh, we have a hull breach, which is not great. And we almost have a second hull breach, too. So we are going to have to deal with that before too long. It looks like they're also doing a pretty good number on my power grid. But the oxygen has not gone out yet. So yeah, patch that breach real quick. Good. Go ahead and fire at that person on their... St oh, he's still firing guns at me. How dare you? I will fire at what I need to fire at, sir. And then we're just going to kind of cheese this fight for a minute. Let this fight go on for a while. There we go. I was trying to drag the fight out, but I think the enemy is able to, like, kill themselves. Uh, so, Jenna has leveled up. Every time you get to one of those fights that's labeled in red, where it's like a multi-ship fight, uh, your captain levels up. And you get more crew cap, you get more floor space, and you get more weapon slots uh, to prepare yourself with. That's good news, because we need to bring on another crew with even more firepower. Uh, so it looks like our laser blaster can bounce. 
It looks like our laser blasters can reload faster. And it looks like we can add a 26% damage increase to all of our weapons. As long as that damage is hitting a crewman. I don't know what translates to more damage. A 26% increase against crew. A bounce. Let's try the bounce because that just sounds awesome. Like the, bou the bounce sounds rad. So I'm going to take the bounce. What we needed next was... Let's resume... And under load, we need to get this force field generator up. There we go. Force field generator is ready to rock. We can sit a technician on it. I also need to hire some people. So I've got a pilot. I've got a technician. I was hoping I could find somebody with a strong systems background. Unfortunately, we don't have that right now, so I guess I'll just take a technician. But somebody needs to be working on the force field during combat for it to function properly. I think I'd like to save up next to see if we can get more money for another mining station. And increase our crew. Eh, I'm fine with that. 2% weapon damage does not seem that helpful to me. Doesn't That's not something that like makes me husky on a high level. All right, so now that the enemy's here, you guys all get on your stations. You go up there. You're on systems. You go over there. You're on piloting. The game does need some quality of life. Uh, so what I'd like to be able to do is if there was a button that said red alert, basically you could assign everybody like a, a station. And when you're in the run-up to where an enemy's at, the line down here would be colored red. And when it hits that red line, it means that you have everybody go into red alert and make themselves ready at whatever their station is. Rather than them trying to scramble and get to their station once it's kind of like too late, if you take my meaning. Uh, yeah, like, let's get everybody onto a station. And if we can get just the tiniest bit of evasion, I'm okay with it. So this guy right here, he's got two guns. He's firing lasers. That's not great. Let's focus all of our fire on getting rid of his electrical system. Because I think that's probably the fastest way to disable all of his guns. That's exactly what we accomplished right there. That was the weak link in the chain. Unfortunately, he's very evasive. Wow. He's running around us like crazy right now. Like, I'm trying to knock out the power, but he's not making it easy. There we go. Now that the power is knocked out, his evasion should go down because they can't pilot too good anymore. Those ricochet bounces are pretty nasty. Yeah, it, it basically doubles the damage an individual shot deals. That's incredible. That's a really good pickup right there. That's the good stuff. Okay. Yeah, sink that thing. Knock it. Oh, that's a different looking ship right there. Knock it down, boys. Knock it down. Ah, five more and we would have circa 2006 Leet Speak, dude. We were so close. We were so close to just, like, jiggling my nostalgia. Uh, so we can upgrade our force field generator. That'll make it slow bullets faster. We can unlock machine guns. I'll probably go with the force field upgrade. I know we haven't really... Oh, we got a lot of fires and things. There. Oh, my God. The entire world is on fire. Okay, boys. Knock it out, get it done. Unfortunately, we're not very good at firefighting. Yeah, we might actually burn down here. I'm guessing we can probably vent the Atmo just like you can in FTL if you have an airlock in the room but I don't have an airlock in the room, so we've just got to kind of hard mode this thing. Yeah, if you guys can get everything patched up, that'd be great. Uh, enemies. It looks like he's got a machine gun, so he actually should not be able to harm us altogether that much if you get on the force field. That's the that's the main thing is you got to get on the force field first. There we go. And as you can see, he's going to slow down the bullets until they no longer have a velocity that hurts us. 
Uh, that's what I was talking. This force field is very strong. Like, it's a solid piece of hardware. Every time I get it in my runs, I am pleased with it. And we got a lot of gunfire flying all over the place. I don't know what this guy's evasion is looking like. Doesn't matter too much. Just spread the love. The love, the love. Just kind of try to create problems in various compartments that they can't deal with. Yeah, exactly. If some guys get split in half by spaceborne death lasers, then that's a hazard that goes along with the job, man. It's just, you know, it swings that way sometimes. Oh, we got another scary looking ship over there too. I don't know what it does. And a mercenary agency coming on in. I'm hoping we don't take too much damage because I'd like to be able... I'd like to be able to mostly just mine during this next section. Like, our cash situation has not been great. A burst laser weapon. That does sound pretty cool. I would, I, I would like the burst laser weapon. The weapon of burstiness sounds pretty good to me. How much does it cost by comparison to the normal shooty weapon? Does my perk work with that too? Is it all laser weapons get a bounce? Oh no, it's only the laser blaster. So we're going to be miss. I'm not going to install it then. So we managed to bring in a little bit more cash. I just let it mine in the interim. We're going to try to get everybody onto a station here. Right before things go too wild and crazy. Because we do have a combat come. I wish they would just stay on the station, man. It'd be nice to have like a, a shift right click command. What kind of weapon does he have? He has machine guns. That works out really well for us. Okay. So since he has machine guns, yep, we definitely want this technician on there. It looks like they're firing. Well, they're firing at various things. You're on piloting. You come back up here. Try blocking some projectiles on this side. I don't think guns take that much electricity, so I think we're actually just going to have to kill the gunners outright. Very nice. Keep those bullets from penetrating. Dude, I love that force field. I love the little animation, too. It's just so satisfying to look at. Like, this is not a super beautiful-looking game. Like, it looks like it was mostly made inside MS Paint, but some of the little animations and whatnot, like the force field catching bullets and slowing them down, or like the little guy's eyes exploding out of their heads when they decompress are just really good and really, really nasty little pieces of design that are fun to watch. Go ahead and swap over to the other gun, the other, other, other gun. And when they run out of gunners, I can finally be happy. This is the first build that I've had in playing this game for the last hour and a half or so that has worked out and I have not died explosively like the first 20 minutes into the game. We're doing pretty good right now. We're cruising. All right, go ahead and knock out the power grid now. Oh, he's shooting back at us. Stop that. Oh, never mind. They're all dead anyways. It doesn't matter. They're, they're generators. They're, their orbs are floating through space. That's how you know you lost a space fight is when your orbs are floating through space. Reroll that. We could get a force field plus four slow. That'd be really nice. Yeah, let's do that. I, I think that's the final upgrade that I'm going to take for the force field. But what we can do is we can go to our upgrades here. And if I go to my weapons, what can I do with my laser blasters? So for 2,000 bucks, I can increase the damage by one. I can increase the chance that it lights a fire uh, pretty by a large amount. Every single weapon and every single object in this game has a tree. I think I brought that up earlier on in the game, but there's lots of upgrades here. Like, there are reasons with this title to develop your economy and get it moving. So far, I'm fairly happy with the way that this flows. Like, it's not... So, as the sum of all of its pieces, there's nothing here that you haven't seen before. This is a game where you get to build up a ship compartment by compartment, and you go through FTL-style battles 
It needs more content. It needs more little events and things that can happen along the way. I do think that the game could be spaced out a little bit better. It feels like the game is constantly throwing something at you. And so I feel like these events could give you another two or three days on the in-betweens. But maybe I should be playing on easy mode if I'm going to complain about stuff. I don't even know if it's a complaint. It just feels like the game comes at you fast, in my opinion. And we could upgrade the force field, but I don't think that we need to. It feels like there's a very rapid succession of events where it's hard to bounce back if you have, like, repairs to do in between stuff every now and again. And maybe it could be a little bit more breathing room. But, by and large, I think the game's doing a pretty good job. It's got the bits and pieces there now. It just needs to be fleshed out with more content and more varieties and more things that you can do and more activities. More stuff like that. I'll probably upgrade... My guns. We're all we're all in on the laser blaster strategy right now. So in seven days, our laser blaster will be all ready to roll. But my name is Splattercat. This game is called Rogue Station. Hope you guys liked it. I will catch you tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. For right now, this game is in early access. And the developer is patching pretty much every single day from what I've seen so far. So he's moving pretty quickly with the bug fixes, which always bodes well in my opinion. So keep an eye on it. Maybe it'll turn into something super rad down the line. For right now, I think as a proof of concept, it's doing a really good job. Oh my god, we've gotten so lucky with the sheer volume of ballistic ships we've come across this run. It's just going so well for us right now. But yeah, Rogue Starship. Or st Rogue Station, I can say this properly. There's so many of these little, like, Starship Theory-type games that, like, the names and whatnot are bleeding together for me. But Rogue Station doesn't particularly do anything new, but it does mash together two ideas that previously existed in a way that I think works and is satisfying to play. And there's a ton of meta progression to play around with here, even in its earliest iterations. And so, interesting stuff, in my opinion. I'll catch y'all later. Thanks for hanging out. And that's about all I got for you. Bye, folks.